When you first look at this tweet by First Lady Jill Biden, you don't think anything of it. It's just an ordinary tweet by the president's wife. No big deal at all, right? And if you just so happen to zoom in just slightly, you'll see a Baphomet goat. Almost like this is the deity that the occult and satanic worshipers all focus around. I know you're going to claim that this video is another conspiracy theory. If you stick around to the end of this episode, your eyes will open up to the reality of the country we are living in today. And obviously, I just want to break down some things to you. When you understand the biblical truth of what Jesus said about goats and how it relates to this photo, your mind will be blown. First of all, let's look at this photo. It says, we the people, the White House. It looks just like an ordinary holiday tweet, right? Also, by the way, uh, Joe Biden did a Christmas uh, speech in which he never mentioned Jesus Christ. And before we even keep on zooming in and see about this goat in Baphomet, we know that America has chosen to side itself with the side of the left so many times. Don't know what Baphomet is. It's a, it's a deity allegedly worshiped by the Knights Templar. It represents a form of rebellion. Check out what Jesus said about goats and sheep and the nations. You know, it's no accident that this is the first lady, that in the same year that the first lady posted this on Twitter, Joe Biden just so happened to have a Christmas speech where he never mentioned Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, the very form of Christianity, the very form of God in America has been completely twisted. What does this goat mean? What can we draw from it? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 31, when the son of man appears in his majestic glory with all of his angels by his side, he will take his seat on the throne of splendor and all the nations will be gathered together before him. And like a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats, he will separate all the people. The sheep he will put on his right side and the goats on his left. Then the king will turn to those on the right and say, you'll have a special place in my father's heart. Come and experience a full inheritance of the kingdom of realm that has been destined for you from before the foundation of the world. For when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. When I was poorly clothed, you covered me. Then, 37, then the godly will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you with no place? When did we see you with sick or tenderly? The king answer him, don't you know when you cared for one of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love to me. Then to those on his left, the king will say, leave me, for you are under the curse of eternal fire that has been destined for the devil and all of his demons. For when you saw me hungry, you gave me no food. When you saw me thirsty, you gave me no drink. And it goes on to really say how Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats. And the fact that this goat is in this photo is well, something that I believe God is really speaking to all of us. There's been so many things going on in America that have been demonic, yet now we have this photo that is clearly demonic. A lot of people want to say that spiritual things are reaching and they're just too far and they're just like conspiracy theories, right? But here we have the actual evidence that things are going on in this country that are completely against God. And I'll explain to you why. I know a lot of you think, oh, Gabe, like Democrats, Joe, Biden, don't they like give to the poor? Don't they like help those in need? Well, notice this for the topic of abortion, right? We have people, Democrats that say we support abortion because we support women's rights, women's right to have freedom over her body and do whatever she wishes. And as they claim those things, here we have 63 million babies who have been killed ever since Roe v. Wade was passed, right? So in the name of freedom and women's rights, we are now killing babies because what everything Satan does, he doesn't clearly kill people. He doesn't clearly hurt people. He doesn't clearly just walk past a blind or needy or sick person. No, instead he re-messages everything and to manipulate and control what you are thinking and what you are seeing. That's why even you're tempted to scroll off this video right now. It's because Satan wants you to not know this truth about sheep and goats. I want to say thank you to Nick Jones who actually revealed some of these truths already. Democrats say they want to help people economically and they want to give handouts to people who will help them who are in need, right? But then we have with these handouts a bunch of fraud and a bunch of ways in which they're going about it that don't actually reward people's hard work. They don't actually reward people that are being responsible with the finances they have, but they actually reward people that aren't responsible. And then they can't even rely on the handouts. And there's just so many broken things here in the system that Democrats claim they are doing, but really it's just a form of manipulation. You know, the very platform that Joe Biden stands on has kicked God out of everything they want. Not only that, they want to promote this gender confusion agenda. And he even held an interview. No, he didn't invite a Christian into the White House. He didn't invite faith into the White House or God. Instead, actually, he invited Nick Mulvaney, which is a transgender TikToker, and did an interview with him. I mean, this is just the type of stuff that now the, the head of the United States is doing, but it's not just the head of the United States. Now I'm going to tell you how there could be parts of your life that represent a goat nation. You see, Jesus wasn't just talking about nations here. He was also talking about people. And I know you watching this episode right now, it's easy for us to just look at President Biden and say the things that he's doing wrong and say the things that America is going in the wrong direction. But listen to me when I say this. If we want 
want our country back, we are going to have to take the righteous steps and do what God has called us to do. And we need to eliminate the goats from our life. And that's now the topic that I want to get to. And before I do that, I just want to tell you that I've released a 90-day devotional that has broken down biblical truth about love, dating, relationships, how to hear God talk, how to get a miracle in your life, how to overcome worry, um, how to get high God's way, and so much more. You know, I never thought I'd be an author, but God really put these messages in my heart. The link is down in the description below. It's also in stores everywhere. It's for all ages. Get you a copy right now. Now I'm going to tell you how you can identify the goats in your life. You know, in this life, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. No matter how long you've been a Christian, no matter how many times you've gone to church and read your Bible and sung Bethel worship songs and even prayed in tongues, you still have the exact same body, the exact same flesh, right? You didn't become a 300-pound ripped man just when you gave your life to Christ. My point here is that in your life, your spirit is fully saved, righteous, redeemed, forgiven, forever going to heaven, eternally saved, right? And then your flesh is still of the same sin and curse and destruction that you had before. And your soul is the bridge between the spirit and the flesh. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. I'm telling you these things because you've got to understand that in this life, we have to kill the flesh. That's why Paul said in Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I who lives, but it's Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. What he was saying there was, I daily kill my flesh and kill my, my fleshly desires of lust, of the pride of eyes, of the pride of life, of wanting quick dopamine fixes, of wanting the microwave generation, wanting the career that isn't the best for you, but the career that you're told to get because other people tell you to get it. Wanting the social media followers or the friend's attention or the, the opinion of others to be so highly favorable of what you think that you don't even speak up for truth in your school or your workplace, that you don't even pray and take your time separate from everything else to spend with God, right? That you're just always on your phone and always on entertainment and music. By the way, the things that I'm telling you right now are not things that I'm just judging you and blaming you for. These are areas of my life that I need to think about, that I have had to say, Gabe, that, that's change. Gabe, that's turn. Gabe, that's, that's go in this different direction, right? And we've always got to be disciplining ourselves. That's why there's a difference between being born again and being a disciple, right? Being born again is just a start. But when you're first born, you can't just say that everything in your life is just going to be perfect and you're just forever made, right? Now, yes, your spirit is perfect. Your spirit is righteous and redeemed and restored but you've got to discipline yourself to kill the flesh. And so that's just the encouragement that I bring you today. Don't be afraid to be hard on yourself and discipline yourself. Set goals for this coming year and identify the goats in your life. Maybe it's a distraction. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's fear. You know, if you find yourself just having thoughts and feelings of fear and they just keep coming back time and time again, choose to run back to the word of God. A lot of times we feel like we just can't do something. We feel like we just can't uh, accomplish that which God has called us to. And I'm here to tell you that all things are possible to him that believes. But how do you really believe in that certain situation? And you know, it's not just about believing that Jesus died and rose again. It's important that we place our eyes on the words of God that he wants us to have in that specific area. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're struggling with finances, if you're struggling with physical pain and you need healing in your body, or you need wisdom for your next job, you need wisdom for your friend group, you need a, a house, an apartment, um, some type of, of different season in your life, some type of different upgrade in your life, I encourage you to run to what the word of God says. And before you seek those things, first say to yourself, how can I advance the kingdom of God today? You know, our number one priority should always be thinking to ourselves, how can I love God and how can I love others today? And don't be afraid to build yourself up. If you want to help others, you got to build yourself up. You got to run into God's presence. You know, a lot of people criticize praying in tongues a lot, but I'm here to just tell you that one of the best ways to enter into God's presence is first, give thanks for the things that he's done. Take time out of every single day and just get quiet with God. Go into your closet and thank him for everything that he has given you. You say, Gabe, I don't think he's given me much. Are you kidding me? Open up your eyes. Thank him, but also worship God in tongues. You know, the Bible says singing in the spirit. And what the way to do that, if it's super simple, it's not complicated. I know a lot of people make praying in tongues super crazy, but it's actually more biblical than you could ever know. So be sure to click this video to pray in tongues right now. I'll see you